Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Kamenarik here at the Age Management Medical Conference in Las Vegas, Nevada at the spectacular Bellagio Hotel. And I have the distinct honor of having with me today Dr. Florence Comite from the Comite Center for Precision Medicine, best-selling author of the book Keep It Up. Wonderful to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's wonderful to speak with you again. It's a great meeting I think we have here going on twice a year here in Las Vegas in November usually, and I think in Florida, in generally in Florida, in April and May. Yep. Well, I like the Florida one a lot because <laughs> it's a chance to warm up, because living in Ohio, it's a little cold, so getting down to the uh, Florida, Florida meeting is always nice to warm up and get that frost off the, off the uh, body. So uh, th this morning you were speaking about um, uh, Hormones. hormones and obesity, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're at a hormone convention, right? So what, what would you say was the, the major point of your lecture that you wanted to deliver this morning? I think in each one of us being unique individuals, it's a multi-organ issue. Obesity is not just one disorder. It's a disorder that arises out of multiple endocrine systems. And that point was made very clear by my physician associate, Nicole McDermott, who's an endocrinologist in her own right. That's the most vital issue, that if we just look at getting rid of fat, it's going to come back. But if we look at the thyroid, the adrenal gland, if we look at the relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the gonads, whether you're a male and it's testes or you're a female and it's ovaries, we're going to make a difference. And actually, that difference can be seen within a few weeks. And that's wonderful stuff because for the man who isn't feeling up to par and doesn't feel like himself, getting resolution of those symptoms starting in the first few weeks often can move therapy forward quickly and then you get greater compliance, which I'm sure you see quite a bit. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, what we do see is that the most, the most annoying I think symptom that most men have is not what you would think. Most people think, oh, it must be sexual function. And true, uh, erectile dysfunction or libido are definitely affected by aging and the change in hormones and the drop in testosterone. But actually, the biggest issue is energy. Most men start describing difficulty keeping it up, not just in the bedroom, but in the boardroom and during the day. And whereas they Why might, <laughs> <laughs> they might have been used to playing, you know, eight holes of golf three times a week, they can barely keep it up for nine holes once a week. Or playing with their children or grandchildren is no longer an option after a full day at work. So as opposed to somebody at their peak physiological state in their 20s, where you can burn the candles at both ends and you can keep it going all night long and keep running all day, that isn't really possible once you hit your 30s and beyond. You begin to notice that run down feeling and that run down feeling is related to what's happening in your body. Now, you've been on the planning committee uh, here at the Age Management Medical Group meetings for some time now. Uh, what would you say is the benefit for a physician, PA, uh, health extender to attend these lectures? That's a great question, Rob. I think that age management medicine is a futuristic approach to what we should be practicing in today's world. And that is, there's a convergence of trends that range from genomics, or the study of genes, to epigenetics, and the fact there are actually switches on genes that can go on and off, to inflammation, to hormonal optimization, to management of stress and obesity, all of which we as physicians were really not trained in medical school to address. We're really about disease. The state of American health care is not about health. And so the notion of feeling healthy or being healthy is really not the same as we used to think of it a decade or two ago, where if you ask somebody, well, why do you go see a doctor? It's because you're either sick or you have something that you think is wrong with you. The real issue is what's happening at the cellular level. And how do we induce changes to keep people healthy?
I see all these ads on TV, you know, Prudential Life Insurance and, you know, let's keep our body, let's keep our finances, you know, great for as long as we live and we're going to outlive our money. Do you see those commercials right. all the time? Yeah, very common. They're very common places. Exactly. And all I can think of when I see it is, well, you might live a long time and you might have all this money, but what are you going to be in a rocking chair on the porch or stroked out or on a dialysis machine? So the good news is, you know, if we address these factors as young as possible, even in our children changing the way we eat, we sleep, the kind of exercise that we do, and recognizing that we want to extend our health span to match our lifespan. That it's not just about longevity. Yes, we're living longer. But what's the point of living longer if you're not living well? Right. I would agree with that one wholeheartedly. Yeah. Now, you have a very unique, one-of-a-kind experience, extensive uh, time at the National Institute of Health, working with hypogonadotropic, hypogonadal boys, and using HCG therapy. What do you feel or is the most profound effect that HCG can have on the hypogonadal male? That's a fascinating question, too, because it's based on research that we've actually published in, at the Endocrine Society about a year ago, and now we're collecting more in-depth data to publish it in a peer-reviewed journal. The question you're asking bears on the fact that when men age into their 30s and 40s and beyond, they actually have great testicles. Their <laughs> testicles are still able to perform. <laughs> That's a good thing to have, it's great testicles. What they don't have is the messaging system between the testicles and the brain. And what goes awry is the fact that the brain is no longer noticing that the testosterone that's circulating is too low. We call that the negative feedback loop in medicine. And that's what's really gone awry. So 86% of men that we studied who had low testosterone had low LH. And LH is the indicator, the hormone from the brain that tells the testicles, go make testosterone. HCG is very similar to LH. It's an analog of LH. And by utilizing HCG, we actually tell the testes to go do their the work they're supposed to be doing. And in that way, we keep the body physiologically as healthy as possible because we're doing, we're mimicking nature, as opposed to giving us testosterone at a younger age when we actually shut down the body's ability to make testosterone. We're giving it artificially so the body thinks, I'm off duty. And I'm not sure that that's the best way to go because I think keeping our own natural function, in this case a male's natural function, going in a physiologically normal way, the way Mother Nature should allow men to do for many years, but doesn't, is the best way to go.